So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with a standard 2x2. Two two. This is not going to be a 2x2 two two tutorial. A 2x2 two two two? tutorial. Yeah, this is a build server. <clears throat> yeah, this is not a 2x2 two 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 tutorial. I, I literally can't even. But, for this build, you do have to build a 2x2 two two in some specific ways. You have to have a right side triangle, and as usual, an inward facing door. You never really want an out outward door. You want an inward door on a right side triangle, and you want a double door as the inner frame. So now we're going to go ahead and wall it in like a normal 2x2. Two two. Now one more. As you come in, this is going to be your hallway, and then these are going to be your two loot rooms here. Like this. And we can go ahead and put frames on the rest of it. And convert it all to stone. Okay, now let's go ahead and put a roof on this thing, because it's what normal people do. Okay. <clears throat> now, also important is that this first room is going to be your loot room, so, um, and this one's going to be your TC room. So let's go ahead and do this. Put the TC there, and before you place this frame, you might want to, yeah, before you place this frame, you might want to put the wall halfway up, and the triangle here, that's all set, and then we got the frame, that way you don't waste any resources, so nice and clean, and then let's put standard doors on the front. Perfect. Let's go ahead and make some locks. We're not weirdos. Okay, perfect. So there's your, you know, standard 2x2, two two, but to the specifications we need for arm trap base. For TikTok and YouTube shorts, you have to get it as short as possible for business fan. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I agree. Oh, great entirely. Okay, so... Alright. So here's what we do next. We're going to leave the doors off for now while we are doing the build. Right? But this is your basics. Let's go over what makes it unique. So again, you need the right side triangle. Or left side as you're coming in. The inward facing door. And you need a double door on the inside. You can have the doors open the standard direction into your airlock triangle. And then you need your loot room first, and your TC room second, in a side-by-side -side hallway scenario. So this is the 2x2 two two that you're going to need to build the trap base correctly. So now, let's start going over... Um, I want to show you separately how the electrical works. Right? So here is our wiring diagram. I know it looks a little complicated, out of the gate, and it al almost uses one of everything, <clears throat> but it's actually fairly simple, um, pretty elegant, only takes two solar panels, right, one combiner, um, very perfectly uses a medium battery storage amount. So we are going to, we'll go through this piece by piece. But the main thing that you want to look at, right, is your battery starts here. So everything on this side of your battery is just your input. And that's very simple. you got a two solar panel input. And here's our switch right after the battery that's going to shut everything off. And this is actually connected to our Rust Plus so that we can save as much battery as possible when we shut it off. It just shuts everything off, right? Um, but what you want to see, what you want to look for, and they're highlighted green. They're powered on this um, is your branches. So we just have four different branches, right? So you can follow the green line as your main power line as it moves through the battery, the switch, and these four branches. 
right? And then finally comes off into the blocker. So what makes our trap work is it's based off of this memory cell here. The memory cell basically just says, once the trap is tripped, it stays tripped. That's it. That's effectively what it says until I manually reset it, right? And that's kind of what a uh, memory cell is made to do. So for example, you see the trap here. When you step on the trap, it does the set function on the memory cell. And then when you press the reset button, it does the reset button on the memory cell. And then the stuff coming off of this is just what's powered depending on which way it's tripped, right? And so that's pretty much all that's going on here. So we'll go through this a little bit at a time. Um, I want to show you how it works. So let's start off for the purposes of this video. I'm going to use a test generator off on the side over here as our main power source. Um, we'll ignore the rest of the input and let's get some electrical going. So we are going to need a, I'm going to go in order. We're going to need a smart switch. We are going to need one, two, three, four um, branch circuits. We're going to need four branch circuits. We're going to need a memory cell, a blocker. And here's the fun one is an XOR switch. This is uh, the one that yeah, people don't use quite as often. Um, it's a great logic switch. It's a logic switch is what it is. All right, so let's keep moving. We've got the XOR. Now we are going to need a button. We are going to need a pressure pad. We're going to need four door controllers. We are going to need a heartbeat sensor, a Tesla coil, a smart alarm. And separately from this list, we're going to need a CCTV camera and a computer station. We'll come back to that later. I think that covers it. I think that covers it. So we should have everything in our inventory now that we're gonna need. <clears throat> so I wanna show you the basics of how this works. So first we're gonna drop, if it'll let me here, there we go. First we're gonna drop the smart switch, low and left, right? The smart switch is going to come straight up into your branches. So we're going to drop four branches as close together as we can. And like with most branches, you're going to take your power out. And on just like on my diagram, I'm going to use green for our main power line. Power out to input. Power out to input. Power out to input. <clears throat> and you leave your last one open. So that's a normal setup. So same thing, so now I can come out of here, power the first one. I can come out of here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that doesn't look good, let me, I hate that. Okay, so let's go ahead and connect it a little bit lower. Yo, Christina. Received. Hey, I appreciate you. ITS Pro 30, woo, ITS Pro 30, woo, ITS Pro 30, woo. Woo! <laughs> Seven months, thank you so much, appreciate you. All right, how are you doing tonight? Okay, so there we go. Green line is our power line. Look at that. And that's the one that we're going to be able to pair through our Rust Plus. Right? So, right there, pair. Fun, right? <clears throat> okay, so, now that we have those basic ones down, here's what we're going to do. Let's do one main branch at a time. So let's start with the actual memory cell itself. This is the exciting one. So we're going to need a memory cell. And here we go. Let's get the pressure pad. Let's put the pressure pad somewhere off over here. Nice. So here's what you're going to do. The output, the power out of the pressure pad. is going to, now I'm not going to show necessarily, actually let's start this over, let's use a different color here. Um, this one, let's do blue, since this is a control line. And actually this part's important, um, when you place it down, because we're going to hide the line with a rug, let, so let me pick this up. So when you place the trap, and we can go over this inside, you're going to want to place it in a way where you can hide the 
you can see the green line that I have. Whenever it goes low is what you're looking for. You want to, you can place it as low as possible and trace it all the way back. There we go. Then you could trace it back <clears throat> like such. And so we're going to do this kind of thing for the whole thing. So this is going to control the set. Okay, so let's power it first. All right, and oop, almost forgot branch. So our first branch runs into that. <clears throat> you can see the lights indicating uh, what's going on here. It does have power. It has not been tripped. Boom. The bottom light is memory. It's now been tripped. It's going to stay that way. So this is the main functionality that drives... See, now nothing changes. This is the main functionality that drives our entire system. Right? And same thing. We can take a button and the button output it's going to go into the reset and then the power from our button is coming from this second branch All right there you go now it's reset oh here's something to keep in mind this button stays depressed watch two three four five there you go now i can See, now I can trip it. So that's the core concept here. So just to go over one more part of it, let me show you how the output of the memory cell works. So we're gonna use a door. Yeah, let's do this. We're gonna do this just to show you how this works. Let's put a door here and we're gonna put a door controller next to the door. So the secret to setting a door controller is unlocked door, number one, open the door, number two, click pair to door, number three. When it closes, you know you did it right. So there you go. So that's now paired, and that's what the bottom light means, is paired. So our power in, here's the fun part, our power in, depending on which door this is, right? So for our trap, the trap doors are going to stay open, right? They're going to stay open. So if we want it open, we need to use the inverted output. The inverted output is going to be on when the light's off. So on until you step on the pad. Look at that. Right? Or if I want, I can use the other side. And this is not on until I step on the pad. There you go, not on until I step on the pad. So this memory cell and this functionality that we see here is the main thing that runs the trap. Oh, I fell off. Is you've got a memory cell that gets set by a pressure plate, reset by a button. One side is open is on until you step on it. The other side is off until you step on it. So let's build this in place. So let's start with the trap. Trap placement, you don't want it dead center. You don't want it dead center and your trap does need to be one of the first things you place in this room. You, you can't be placing the stuff next to the door here. You don't want the door here. You don't want to have like a uh, any regular items on the ground, any other deployables, you want to offset it towards the wall and towards the door a little bit, like this. But There you go. Towards the wall, towards the door. That part already placed. Rock and roll. So now let's do what we did before. Let's put our smart switch low and left. Also, I'm stupid. I'm going to have to edit that part out before it. That's not supposed to be there in this build. That would be in a standard 2x2. You don't want that there on this build. So don't do that. I'm going to edit that out. Don't, don't do what I did. Don't do what I did. You don't want that there. You don't want that there. That's not it. So here's your standard 2x2 two two with an open TC room. Okay. Let's put our four circuits down. Let's 
Let's put our memory cell down. Let's put our button down. There we go. Now, let's run our power line. This here. Okay. Now, those are all good. Let's switch it back to default. So I can run branch lines. This is a branch line. That's a branch line. Now, control line, I like to do in blue. This one's reset. Boom. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, now another control line is this one. Now, here's the part that matters. Like I said, you want to connect to the output and watch the green line. Boom. You see that magic spot where it's nice and low? That's what you're looking for. And then same thing. You can pretty much come straight back. And once you're in this room along the crack, you're good. That's what she said. <laughs> Just what she hath proclaimed. I like to do these little routing, nice routings. Okay, blues control line. See, look at that. Nice and neat. So we've got green power lines running through. Black is our branch lines. So we're powering one branch, two branch. This control, this generates its own power. Now this part is, uh, you're going to use this room for your medium battery. It's going to be hidden anyway. So we're going to put that in that corner. So let's take our power output. We're going to do this in green. This is our main power branch. Put it just above this one. Coming to the bottom of the switch. Beautiful. I do need to do this. For right now, I'm going to run our power in. Again, it's typically going to be powered by um, your two solar panels on the roof. That's all it takes is two solar panels, but if, uh, for now I'm going to plug it into the test generator just so we can be at full power here. Um, okay, so back to work. Boom. It's turned on. Now look at this. Should be like before. Yep, we've got a green light until we reset it. Perfect. So now let's show the actual doors in action. So let's pair our first two controllers. This one, you can, it really doesn't matter you can leave it like pretty much anywhere here behind the door and they're not going to be able to to see it right or below the top of the door behind the door once it opens so same thing unlock the door open pair it closed perfect lock it back okay one more same thing this one's key you want it below the height of the door and in this gap here unlock the door open pair it closed lock it back all right the reason why is because when it closes you can't see any of that hardware when you're right here actually that one you can almost see that green light if you want to hide that more there's nothing wrong with that you absolutely can like maybe back behind this one maybe let's do that let's move that let's see if we can find a slightly better spot let's come in here Let's put it inside here. I bet this will work. There we go. Can we reach it? Well, we can't reach it from here to pair it. But this should work. Nope. Just kidding. It did not. Okay. Well, maybe that's not the spot. Let's see. Where's going to be the best hiding spot? I had it on my other build. I think we can do it back behind this ledge. Let's try that. Maybe that's where I had it. Okay, so let's try putting this puppy by. Oh, and this wasn't unlocked. Dang it. That's probably why it didn't set. There you go. Much better. So we hide this one behind the door here. And we do all this because when we are like this, we can't see any of that equipment until we've stepped on the trap. Right? So you can't see any of that electrical equipment until you step on the trap. Now before we get too far, let's do the rug. All right. So now should be able to center up a rug, put it as far towards the door as you can. And look at that. Clean baby. 
clean. All right. That is our hidden trap system. Green light. Okay, perfect. So here's what we're going to do. Now we're going to use the actual output from this. So let's run a yellow line to our door controllers. So here's the thing. We're going to run the inverted line so that these are open. So that these doors are open. They're powered and open when the trap is waiting. When the trap is waiting to catch them, it's going to be open. We're going to tuck this on the back of this concrete pillar. You want to do this without this door here, by the way. I'm going to do all this without this first door on. That's super helpful. And same thing, tuck it onto the side of the pillar. As far down as you can, power in. And then the pass-through comes to door number two, like such. Now watch. When we reset it, they're both open. When we step on it, they both close. And they're going to stay closed until somebody physically presses this button. So killing power won't do anything. Killing power won't do anything. If you lose power, it doesn't fail open. It fails closed. Someone has to manually press this button to reset the trap. There you go. So that's what inverted output does, is it gives us power when the plate has not been stepped on. So let's look at this thing again. And you can see what I'm talking about here. Let me put it on this side. Um, so we run from the switch. Here we go. So we've got the inverted output runs to your trap doors, right? And I've got a yellow line on here. So let's go ahead and do the wiring for one more door, right? Which is this one um, here. And I think I can get it like this. So power in, oops, has to come from this one. So again, these are below the height of the door, so they're gonna be tucked behind the door. So again, you can't see any of these electronics, nothing on the ground, none of the door controllers, until you have stepped on the trap. So now that I have these door controllers in here, I can go ahead and do, um, my last door that is trapped my last actual trap door itself um, because we want this to close there's a couple reasons we want this to close with the trap oh maybe I can't put it there dang it okay I can't put it there just kidding so let's take this off Last one needs to go. I wonder if we can get it all the way back here. Well, I guess we can go under. Let's go under. That's the move. So let's go under. Power in. Okay, move. Out of this pass through. So this is all one chain. All one chain here. And what we want to do is give this branch seven power. Seven total power to that branch. Okay. That's the other thing we're going to do. Let's put this door on. It opens inside towards the trap room. See, can I even still reach it though? Yeah, see, I can't reach it behind the door at all. It might let me after closing it. Yeah, see, there you go. You can do it after closing a door. It doesn't have to be open. Just has to be unlocked. Perfect. Okay. There it is. So all three doors open. All three doors close. So the reason we do this is that this is the 
loot room that you're looking at, right? That's the loot room. It looks good. God forbid you don't want them to actually get at any loot. And also, you don't want them to be able to somehow manage to get somewhere to, to cause some ruckus. So just everything goes on lockdown. Everything goes on lockdown. All three of those doors reset. Boom. All three doors close. And that's the end of the inverted output um, line. So let's look at our next line. So the first branch was trap doors. The second branch was the reset portion for the trap. So our third branch just goes straight to one of the legs of the XOR. So let's do a little bit of this XOR wiring and then we will talk about what it does. So let's put it up a little bit. So we've got the XOR and then um, let's run one of these. So branch out into input A. I don't like that crooked. I, I saw that little nub there. Hey, what's up, Tater? My boy. Go to bed. What's up, dude? Was that bad? Ladies and gentlemen. Okay. So where does the other one come from? The other one takes kind of a long road. The other one takes kind of a long road. So an XOR... Um, Here's what an XOR does. You'll notice that this one here is always on. This one is always on. This leg. So you have a green light. A. A has a green light. A and B are different because B is off. That means there's a green light. If these are different, it's green. If they're the same, it's red. So this is basically going to be a little trick here. Let's get the heartbeat sensor. And let's put the heartbeat sensor... Nice and high up here, like such. And here's what we're gonna do. The heartbeat sensor is connected to the branch in black. Power in, comes out to our last branch. Like this, that powers the heartbeat sensor. And um, I'm gonna make sure, here, let me show you what we're doing. All right, so our last branch powers the heartbeat sensor, and then the heartbeat sensor is the second leg of the XOR. So I'm going to run this one in yellow like I have in my little diagram. So the second leg goes to the output of the heartbeat sensor. So here's what that means. You'll notice now these are the same, so it's off. So what this means is when the heartbeat sensor doesn't see anyone, the light's green. When the heartbeat sensor does see someone, the light's red. That's what that means. So it turns off, it goes red when the heartbeat sensor sees someone. But what does the XOR run out to? What signal are we talking about? Well, this is the block. Bro, this runs into the blocker, you ready? So our blocker, let's do this in blue, just kidding. Since it's a control line, this goes here. Boom. So it is not blocked. It is not blocked because the heartbeat sensor sees somebody. When the heartbeat sensor doesn't see someone... Oops. When it doesn't see someone, it is blocked. Wait, where's the nub? There it is. It is blocked. <laughs> Red demon eyed. <laughs> That's awesome. So naturally, I ate it. <laughs> That's my boy. Uh, you love to see it. Yeah. So see. So whatever coming is coming through here is not blocked when it sees somebody. What's up, Ike? There you go. So it's not blocked. When the sensor sees somebody. We have an unblocked line when the sensor sees someone. What is the line, you ask? Well, the line is the remainder of our battery. So we're not going to put another branch on. We just want whatever power is left 
in our battery. We're gonna take all of it, boys and girls. In fact, that's supposed to be green. Hold on, because that's just a power line. So the rest of our power is coming through this line and it's unblocked when it sees somebody. hey -o. so now we're gonna come out of this with red. Where's my image? So here we go. We've got most of this now. We're gonna come, we've got all of this stuff done. We have to come out of the top of the blocker. So out of the top of the blocker comes our kill piece. We're gonna do that last, that's the Tesla coil. The other one we need to run is the other red line, which is the powered by when the switch gets stepped on. So we're gonna do one more door controller, an alarm, and a camera. All right, so let's get a door controller, an alarm, and a camera. The camera you put as high as you can get it there. And you scoot as far away from it as you can and set direction. There you go. The door controller is going to be for this door. Which is going to open this way. Perfect. Let's lock it. Awesome. So, uh, one more thing. Let's put the alarm. We don't quite, we're not quite going to have room in this room, so we want to put it right here. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to come out of the, let's do red. Uh, yeah, we're on red. Perfect. So here it goes. This is our trap output. Our trap output is going to go first through the door controller. There you go. You notice it popped open because the trap is tripped. So see, this is reverse of the other doors. From the door controller to the alarm. Ah, alarm's going off because the trap's tripped. And from the alarm to the camera. Now, let's set the ID of the camera now that it's powered to uh, twap two. Okay. Perfect. So let's reset our stuff here. All right. It's reset. Let's go outside. So here's how it works. It's open. All we see is a loot room, right? That's all we see is a loot room. Look at that. It closed everything down and it opened up the kill room where the heartbeat sensor has a clear and perfect view of me. Clear and perfect view. Clear and perfect view. So let's put together our kill piece. Close this door. You want to put it as close to the door as you can. Just shove it up there. Let's use red. The power in for this puppy is what is coming out of the blocker. Remember, this is going to give us everything that's left in our battery. Ah! Easy, bro. All right. So this is what we see. Someone left the doors open, right? Ah, ah. It happens quickly. All right. Thank you for asking, Ike. That is a great question. So the way you get in and out, the way that you get in and out without dying, I will show thine. Let me go in through this way, and here's what you do. You turn it off. So that's why this is a smart switch. That's why this is a smart switch. Because with a smart switch, you pair it to your Rust Plus app on your phone. Then all you have to do is tap the switch at any time that you want, 
and the entire base is unpowered. It is just a standard 2x2. Two two. With no power, this is just a regular 2x2. Two two. And then whenever you're done, now you do want to make sure that, like, that this is tripped. What in the world? So, yeah, so you want to make sure it's reset. Right? Oops. But now that it's reset, um, I could use the Rust Plus app to turn it on and off. There we go. That works. Uh, it has to be powered. Ow. It was also tripped, which is nice. And uh, another way that you can do it without killing yourself, by the way, which I didn't do, uh, which would be helpful, is you can remove yourself. Um, so authorized, don't set off the uh, sensor. That's the proper way to do it. Let's power it on. Let's reset it. Exclude authorized. Clean. Let's go back to this. Put it on red. Power in comes from here. Now, the nice thing about running 35 units of power to that puppy is that you can kill several players uh, with it without ever having to replace it. Um, it's going to have enough power to, to do multiple kills, multiple kills, which is very important. Okay, so that's now repowered. So that's another way that you, that's how you not die, basically. That's how you don't die is you make sure you're not on the authorized now, this is all trip, but you can also turn this off using your phone. Turning it off closes the front doors. There you go. So that's the play. Um, is there anything else about this I need to make sure and cover? This would be a standard loot room, right? You want to put boxes in here, make it look nice and rich. Yep, there's something else we need to go over. So here's how I think you need to, let's go over how we entice people. So where's the workbench? Are you gonna let me make it? No, let me do it this way. Uh, so workbench level one and a furnace, I think should be in this room. This is my favorite build for this. Is we, now that we've got everything down, this is the last thing we do. Place a workbench here and you place the furnace here. I personally think that you should pick the furnace up a few times to get the health nice and low. Like that. Something like that. Right? So this is what they're going to see when they come up and how they're going to see it. When they get up here, they can't get in. There's a furnace blocking their way. And this is what they see. So I think this is an important part of the build. I think it helps make the rest of the room feel more lived in. And um, I think it's key to the manipulation. By making them break the furnace, it makes coming in here their idea instead of my idea. Right? To me, that's what's happening by putting these pieces here. Now, another part is we're going to have to have two solar panels on the roof. Or, well, we have to power this. So let's go over power options. Power options. First of all, we have the generator. Right? Option number one is the generator. And you could use low-grade fuel to power the battery. And then the battery can run for uh, anywhere from 10 to 15 hours, kind of depending if you get the battery all the way full. But then it can sit silent and not show any power sources. It can just be a standard, simple two by two. This is it. This is all you would see is a simple two by two. Another thing you could do, um, at any time that you get it full, you could remove your power sources, just like turning the generator off. Um, all you need to power it is the two solar panels, right? Let's 
All you need to power it is the two solar panels. You could get it full and then pick up the two solar panels. Or you could put the solar panels down. And let me pick these up, actually, and move them just a little bit. And you can do what I like to call uh, decoy electronics. So we're going to put some... We're going to put these a little bit further back. That's what we're going to do. And then we're going to do some decoy electronics. So our solar panels, let's picture them there. And let's do this. Let's do one of these and one of these and one of these. So if you do that and then you start doing something like this. And then you can set um, as you find them or as you get a chance. Let's go to the electrical. Again, this is just decoy electrical that we're going to uh, point towards farming. Right? And so you can start wiring up hoses or something. You know what I mean? So you start throwing decoy uh, farm items either on the side of your base or... Uh, you know, up on the roof, and you just don't power them. You run lines to them, but you just don't power them. Um, in my opinion, if you're going to do it, make it look a little doofusy, right? Something like this. You might see something like that and be like, okay, whatever. You know, they're trying to do their little, you know, their little garden thing, whatever, right? That's all you're going to see and all you're going to think. So that's decoy electronics. That's an option. And another option would be to um, run sneaky wires from another base. Right, that if you get a chance to have a super low, here, hold on, just for, watch, just to show you what I mean, if you get a chance to put one of your clicks down super low, then you should be able to hide it when you come inside. Oh, too far. Well, anyway, so you could build, if that's your goal, you could build right next to like a cliff or something, right? Build right next to a cliff somewhere that you can um, bring it uphill through the base, right? Like if you had your powered base below, you could run a line up and have it hidden in the rocks because the line's hidden. So you could do a sneaky line, you could do decoy electronics, um, or you could power the battery to full and then unplug your electronics. Those, uh, I guess those would be the three power options that we're talking about here. Um, I mean, to be honest with you, you probably could get away with just putting the two solar panels on the roof and not worry about it. In my opinion, the subtleties of putting other junk on the roof with the solar panels is similar to having the uh, furnace here. Makes it look a little more organic makes it look a little bit less like a trap in my opinion um and that's the build anyone have any questions let's look at the electronics diagram one more time and this has a component list here let's scroll in and look at that let's go over that so here's the component list two solar panels one medium rechargeable battery one root combiner four electrical branches one blocker one memory cell one XOR switch, four door controllers, one heartbeat sensor, one pressure pad, one Tesla coil, one CCTV camera, one button, one smart alarm, and one smart switch. Uh, if you're crafting that stuff, some of the key points would be six tech trash, one gear, and one spring. The rest of it's going to come pretty natural if you're just grinding BPs. Um, and that's the gist of it right there. So again, you got your master remote switch, trap doors, kill room, reset button. Sweet deal. Okay. 